Why Bro Science is Science. For purposes of this video, I will define bro science as a type of scientific inquiry involving low sample size, conducted by non-credential researchers, usually transmitted by oral tradition, and sometimes engaging in speculative causal theories. I will outline six potential objections to bro science, and then I will explain for each objection in turn why I feel that it is largely without merit. Objection number one is that bro science does not use or yield real empirical evidence. Objection number two is that bro science uses small sample size in its studies. Objection number three is that bro science is conducted by non-credentialed non researchers who are not part of the official science community. Objection four is that bro science is transmitted through word of mouth by oral tradition. Uh, Objection five is that bro science often engages in speculative causal theories. In other words, it not only tells us what it believes is true, but details uh, that are purely speculative about why that may be true. And uh, the last and sixth objection would be that bro science appeals to authority. The first of these, uh, that bro science does not use real or empirical evidence, uh, I found in a video published uh, on YouTube in July 20, 2012 by Ian McCarthy, and Ian makes the following statement about what he considers to be legitimate science. Quote, these are just really basic claims that can be licensed because we have real empirical evidence behind them. This isn't simply big boy at the gym told me X, Y, and Z. Unquote. Let's unpack that statement a little. The big guy at the gym has been experimenting with ways to enhance his physique for, let's say, 20 years, maybe 30 years. He's tried things. Some of these things worked, some of them didn't work so well. How is that evidence not real? If it were not real, he would not have made the obvious progress that he has made with his physique. How is his self-gathered evidence not empirical? The word empirical means, quote, relying on or derived from observation or experiment, unquote. The successful bodybuilder's evidence is precisely empirical. It is based on his observations and upon his experiments. So therefore there is no merit to Ian's charge that bro science is not based on empirical evidence. It is. Objection number two would be that bro science uses small sample size. This, uh, at first face, seems to be true. The bro, the bro scientist tends to experiment on himself. If he's a trainer, he may get to experiment on others, although there's perhaps a little bit of an ethical dilemma about using untried methods and charging people money to, to use those on others. But let's say that the bro scientist experiments primarily on himself. He's, he's the one subject. Okay, my first point would be that that evidence is still valid. My second point is that that sample size is multiplied in a few different ways. One is that it is replicated by the bro scientist himself over time. So it's not just himself one time, it's himself multiple, multiply replicated experiments. And then as bro science is successful in propagating ideas to other people, it's replicated by others throughout the bodybuilding community. You might call it a brotherhood, that's what the bro is brother or, or brotherhood. So other researchers try his methods and they do those similar experiments. So the sample size of any one individual experiment is smaller than typically used in official science. And for this reason the pejorative word anecdotal is often attached to it. Oh, that's just anecdotal evidence. As if to say that something, because it is a small sample size, makes it um, unbelievable, incredible, not real. It's not somehow not empirical if the sample size is one. I can tell you from um, my 25 years in the engineering industry that real world decisions are often, often based on a sample size of one. Sometimes that's all we get. 
The third possible objection is that bro scientists are not credentialed researchers. They're not part of the official science community. They don't have degrees in science. But in a way, that in itself is, is a kind of cult of authority. In other words, it is, it's saying two things. It's basically saying that credentialed scientists are without the foibles of regular people. They don't have bias. Uh, they are never lured by money or the prospect of uh, greater chances at publication, things like that. It's also demeaning to the bro scientist by saying that it is impossible for him, being uncredentialed, to use the scientific method, which is just simply nonsense. The fourth possible objection is that the, the method of transmission is incorrect for bro science. The bro scientist does not publish his findings in um, a peer-reviewed official um, journal of science. And because he does things by word of mouth and tells his friends and his brothers in the iron uh, and uses oral tradition to propagate his ideas, that that somehow makes the ideas less true. And I just, I just find that to be um, just on its first, on its, on the surface, totally without merit. The fifth possible objection, and it's the only one that I really think holds water, is that bro science often engages in speculative causal theories. A bro scientist will often find something that really works. It's worked for him, it's worked for him repeatedly, it's worked repeatedly, hundreds of times sometimes, for his clients, who he's, who he's contest prepping for bodybuilding, figure physique, bikini shows. It, it has worked many, many times. That's, a, that's something that's factual, it's empirical evidence. What becomes speculative about it is he says it works for a particular reason. You see this all the, all the time in the older, and I, I assume still current, bodybuilding magazines. I don't really read bodybuilding magazines anymore for this reason, but this kind of um, assigning common sense or guess, guesses, speculative reasons, why certain things work. So you have a real effect. It's demonstrated over and over again that it seems to work. But instead of being just satisfied with saying that a certain thing is, the bro scientist will sometimes be tempted to go beyond that and say, oh, well, this happens because. And I think this is actually the, the root of the um, controversy that was brought to light in the debate between uh, Ian McCarthy and Dave Pulsanella. Uh, Dave had noted that he did very well when he ate precisely every two hours. And there was an assumption by some people that, well, this changes the basal metabolic rate. Ian produced evidence, or quoted evidence, uh, of studies that would indicate that that's not possible, that that doesn't happen. But I think that Dave's evidence is still real. He, he, he's very scrupulous in how he uh, controls his environment during, during his bodybuilding prep. You can see that from any of the Raising the Bar videos. He's four minutes late for a meal and it's the end of the world for him. He's, I'm shrinking, I'm, uh, it's 11.04 instead of 11. So his, he, he runs a very controlled environment when he does his contest prep. So it is possible to doubt his speculative reason for why every, eating every two hours works without necessarily throwing out the baby with the bathwater and saying that the, there's not some other reason why it, why it may not work. So I think that I'll talk a little bit later about what makes for bad bro science, and that's one thing, is engaging in speculative causal theories. If you don't know, say, I don't know why this works, but boy, it sure worked for me and a hundred of my clients, repeatably, reliably, infallibly. The sixth objection, potential objection to bro science is that it appeals to authority. This is the, the point behind Ian's statement, uh, it's not just some big boy at the gym told me X, Y, and Z. So in other words, the temptation is to say that if someone looks more like a bodybuilder, he must know what he's talking about. And of course that is um, fallacious, but it's equally fallacious to say that if someone 
talks like a scientist, he knows what he's talking about. And, and I think Ian himself uh, admits this, that he doesn't want people believing what he says just as a matter of, because he's an authority. We need to replicate these things ourselves and, and pro prove whether they're true. Um, so I don't really think that, I, I know that some bro scientists do make an appeal to authority. Expert X said that, um, you know, fasted cardio is good, therefore it's good. Um, I know that that does happen, but I don't think that it necessarily happens more in the bro science community than outside in those that are fans of official science. So with that in mind, I would like to explain what I do feel are some of the things that make for bad bro science. One is when multiple uncontrolled factors are, are investigated at the same time. This is just plain bad science because when you change, let's say you change your diet, supplementation, your, your workout routine all at the same time, and let's say it got better, you grew, you got stronger, maybe you used objective metrics, but you don't know which of those uh, three or four things you changed led to that, or was it a combination with interactions? So, um, multiple uncontrolled factors at the same time makes for bad bro science. I would say that bro science done by beginning lifters, beginning bodybuilders, is always going to be bad bro science. And the reason is because in weight training, when you are at the beginning of your training, even suboptimal methods produce good results, and that's a very highly confounding thing. I already mentioned number three, which is making unwarranted claims about causality. Uh, bad bro science method number four would be building it on subjective metrics. So I took pre-workout um, XYZ, and I, I just felt so pumped in the gym. I felt great. Well. That you know that's that's nice, but that's not a that's not an objective metric. So it, it, it's going to have to be something to do with size, strength, or something that can be accurately measured, body fat percent, things like that. The final thing that I think makes for bad bro science would be single-sided or unreplicated experiments. So let's say you, I have um, two cups of coffee, one half cup of oatmeal. I went into the gym and I lifted. A certain exact number of reps. I, lift, I lifted 11 reps for every for every set, and I had the best workout of my life. Well, number one, I, I don't have anything to compare that to. I need a base line to compare that to, and then it needs to be replicated. I can't just do that once and come to a conclusion that uh, coffee, oatmeal, and 11 reps is a magic formula that uh, that produces results. Now, I'd like to say that there are some areas where I believe bro science actually outstrips and outperforms official science. One is that you get um, highly targeted subjects. For instance, you can do, bro science is in fact done, uh, often on competitive bodybuilders with at least 10 years of continuous weight training. It is hard to get, as I think most of the official science um, proponents would admit, it's hard to get uh, official science researchers to want to study bodybuilders. There has to be money in it, there has to be some incentive. So you can highly target um, the kind of person. First of all, it is a human, it's not a rat. It is a, a trained individual, weight trained individual. If you want male or female, you can break that down. But you get to train, in fact, on the, if you're a bodybuilder, the one subject that you really care about, which is yourself. And even if your conclusions may, are not... Um, able to be replicated by everyone else, it, it, in one sense you kind of don't care. But, but in, in general what I'm talking about is that you can highly target the kind of subjects that you have in the study to weight trained individuals with a certain number of years experience, with a certain size or strength or certain physique goal or certain body fat percentage, which you can't always do in official science because the money's not there to... official science is expensive. Um, I, th I feel that you get in bro science, a certain freedom from vested interests. Uh, you don't have to publish. You're giving you're giving the information away, and again, bro is brother or brotherhood. You're giving this information away to your brothers, uh, so you don't have to worry about your conclusions. If I conclude that protocol A does work, I'm giving it away. If I conclude that protocol A is bullshit, I'm giving that information away. So either way. 
I have no vested interest in the outcome of the experiment. That does happen a lot in official science where um, certain conclusions will get published if, if the study goes one way. The study may not get published if the conclusions go the other way. Um, and I guess the last one is that in a way you really do have a huge army of research assistants uh, available. That is, those are the other bros. Um, you have peer review by tens of thousands instead of, instead of a handful of people. Now if people blindly believe a piece of bro science that they've heard, they don't question it, they don't apply the scientific method themselves, then I, f I have a problem with that as well. Those people are not researchers, they're lemmings and, and they aren't adding to your, to your database. But I guess my main objection is going all the way back to the beginning, the statement that bro science is somehow not based on real empirical evidence. What happens to the bro scientist when he's in the gym is just as real, if not more real, than what happened to the person that was in the official study. And it's absolutely empirical. Empirical again means that it is relying on or derived from observation or experiment. That's exactly what the bro scientist does. And so that's my little synopsis of why I think that bro science is science. Thank you for listening.